that that is a black hole. And if you touch it, you'll be sucked into it. And besides which, you are three wandering Canadians. The sovereignty issue has to be worked out between the Israelis and the Palestinians. What you need to do is, is create some ideas that make it possible for them to deal with the sovereignty issue. The third thing that we, that, that, that we decided was, whatever we were going to design, we were not going to put something between the people who live and work there and their own governments. And we had all sorts of enthusiastic people from Britain and other places saying, well, why don't you create something like the Vatican State and we've got stamps and we'll have a special citizenship. Well, I couldn't imagine the Israeli government agreeing for one second that the, the, the Jews who live in this place will be separated from their government and, and have something in between them. And with the Palestinians who, are, who have been desperately searching for sovereignty uh, for so long, the idea of, of, of creating another barrier between Palestine, one group of Palestinians and another was a non-starter. So we said, so we said, we will focus on the place, not the people, and we will design a way to manage the places and the issues that cause the friction and the trouble. And so that was kind of what we have been, what happened about, after about two years we, we did. And we, the other principle that we, we came to was, was when you have a choice of designing for an easy scenario or a hard scenario, design for the hard scenario. It's always easy to unroll things and, 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 and simplify them. It's, but it's always it's much more difficult to come to the term and find that the hard scenario is what's going to actually happen and you haven't decided for it. Uh, I'll give you a quick example of this before talking about it. If, if, uh, there's the old, the old city right there. This is the Green Line, which is where the fighting stopped in 1948. On this side is West Jerusalem and Israel. On this side is the, what is the international community considers occupied territory. Now, if if the eventual border follows the 1967 line, which is essentially this line, then you look at and you end up with a, with a hard border between Jewish Jerusalem and Palestinian Jerusalem, then all the gates along here become ports of entry, border crossings into Israel, and all the gates around here become ports of entry or gates into uh, into Palestine. Now, what, what, how does that matter? Well, this is a hard war to get that is kind of a lot. If it's a soft war, if it's a, kind of a united city where people can live anywhere, uh, it's very easy to design a, a security system and, and something to put on the gate. The moment those become border crossing points, everybody gets very, very interested. Not so much about who's going in, but who's coming out and heading to what territory. So that, whenever we came to a choice like that, we always say, okay, the hard scenario is if there's a hard work, we will design our security arrangements for that. And throughout, and throughout the, the process, that, that those are the choices we made. Uh, this, oh, pardon me, this, by the way, uh, the first thing we did uh, when we got started, we, we found a, a collection of all the, the 60 plus peace plans that have been put forward uh, for uh, uh, Jerusalem going back to the 20s. And we found some interesting things. In more than half the cases, when the authors of those plans, whether they were individual experts or working groups or the UN or others, when they came to the question of sovereignty, they said, oh, we will do something special. We will do something international. We will do something with the third party. We will do anything at all to get around the sovereignty question. And, uh, and so we thought, okay, well, these guys are onto something, but they never left us any idea, well, what does that mean? So we thought, we said, okay, well, why don't we figure out what that something special could look like? And that was the number of our work. Now, interestingly enough, when the, when, the, when the war ended in 48, the United Nations said that Jerusalem will not go either Israel or Palestine. It will become a corpus separatum, a separate body, and this, these were the borders that you in said would be the corpus separatum. It would be like a little territory administered directly by uh, the United Nations. A wonderful idea that was just two problems. There was something called the Israeli Defense Force here, and there was something called the Jordanian Arab Region here, and after the Second World War, nobody had the, 
the way of going and post this at that stage. So, uh, but, but on the books, this is the way it's supposed to be resolved. If you, if you look at UN legitimacy for the solution, this is the end. You can't include the best I have a huge piece of Jack territory. We were much more modest. Now, in an area so filled with spiritual sayings and spiritual guidance, we as, as early baby boomers thought we had to turn into heaven. We have to turn to our own problems. <laughs> so we went to the Rolling Stones. And this became our, our, our dying principle. Told us what they did, what they did, which is you know you can't always get what you want. You try to really hard to make get what you need, and you know that quotation has shown up in the, in the Palestinian negotiating documents were released by the Al Jazeera amongst the Jews. Go to it, you'll find that. <laughs> 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 Was it attributed to you or to the stone? It, it, and not at all. It, what it contributed to us. Uh, what it attributed to it? What it was released by Al Jazeera? Yeah. No, no, it, it, was, it came out of the mouths of Israelis and Palestinians. <laughs> <laughs> Did they think it was from the Rolling Stones? I'm not sure. They, they thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem to be so much of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was vision. Yeah, they thought it was vision. And we didn't have, we didn't tell them this. Now, moving on rapidly along, uh, there, I want to just go, we work, we can work for seven years. We started in, in 2004, in the late, late in, the, in the second year of the five. Bombs still going on, violence everywhere, deep suspicion between the two sides, almost no contact whatsoever. And in fact, we were treated like, you know, visiting idiots for even suggesting this. Uh, but, I hark back to something that was told to me by a bunch of Arab scholars when, when the first when that started. And they said they said to me, look, we the Palestinians and we, and and the Israelis are going into a period of wasted time. There's no reason for you Canadians to waste the time. And so that's why, okay, we you know we would go to them and there'd be all sorts of carnage going on. And we'd say somebody's got to work on these things. We can't afford another captive. And we, were, we, 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 we got a little bit of money from the Department of Foreign Affairs. They saw these recently retired bastards coming up. Give them a little bit of money, they'll go away. Uh, and what did we ever fool them? And we used a series of, uh, we, in the first two visits, we talked to over 125 institutions and individuals. We found all the best scholars, all the negotiators, everybody who had something to say, the religious leaders. And we began to soft peddle. The idea, well, maybe we need something special. We didn't go into much detail. Uh, we got some research going, and we discovered that that was a, a very useful tool in focusing people's mind on what we were doing. And uh, we worked with the British and Americans and, and Jordanians, as well as Israelis and Palestinians. And after about 18 months, uh, in, 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 uh, in the spring of uh, November of 2005, we, we, we started to try and put our our thoughts together in something called uh, uh, the Jerusalem Discussion Hall. And uh, it was a good thing that the two bells were working from separate conflicts because we almost had a war. Once you know, once you begin to remind us, it's very difficult. But in November 2005, we got the book finished. It was published by the Monk Center. And we then went, we invited 24 of the best Israeli, Palestinian, and international former negotiators and scholars on Jerusalem to Istanbul for a conference. We, we gave them a presentation, a couple of presentations on the idea. We'd given them the book about two weeks before. And we said, okay, the entire second day will be your critique of our idea. The critique lasted 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then one of them got up and said, look, these are really interesting ideas. These guys haven't got it right, but we should put them to work together. And so we had the most amazing conversation over the next day and a half. And the last morning we got, when we came in, one of the Palestinians got up and said, well, we met last night after the day, we went to bed, and here are your priorities. You've got to work on security, and you've got to work on, on, on imagining a government scheme. And, and so, one did. so we came back, it took a while to get more money, um, and, and then we launched the second phase. Now, the second phase got, got, got really interesting because Hamas won the election, the, there was the war in Lebanon, the pull of, of, of Israel from Gaza and all, of, all the nastiness that happened from 
that. We brought together them, and we knew very well that if we didn't tackle the security issues around some, something special for the old city of Jerusalem, the address wouldn't pay attention. So we got General John de Chastelet, the former Canadian Chief of Defense staff. We got a, uh, the, the, the Deputy Commissioner of the RCMP who had invented the use of police in peacekeeping. We got an American diplomat who run the peacekeepers in Sinai between Israel and Egypt. And they went out and recruited people from Shimbet, Mossad, Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Israeli police, and five or six really good Palestinians who knew a lot of us put them to work. And the amazing thing was that after a meeting or two of fighting, these guys all spoke the same police security lingo. And they were able, we were able uh, by the uh, by the by the fall of 2007 to come up with a document we call a security assessment, which is essentially a blueprint for how you would set up uh, a policing force for the uh, for the old city of uh, Jerusalem if you were going to make something special there. Next phase was even worse. Hamas took over Gaza. Bush launched the Annapolis talks. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, the Americans became very interested in what we were doing. We, as a matter of good politics, we would go down to Washington once a year to tell them what we were doing. And they would look at us in horror, and, and they would do something to the point like this. Tell us what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they would, there was one year they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even take a paper. It was Jerusalem was such a poison and dangerous thing for them to work on, and so. Uh, but but around the time of the Annapolis process of going into the building, we started getting calls from them and requests for briefings and requests for papers, requests for for information. So uh, and in fact, this is Chatham's rules: no attribution, no retribution. Of course, in October of 2008. We had finished all the drafting we were going to do. There was need to write one more version of it. And I thought, I'm going to put this aside until after Christmas, let it all sink in. I've been looking at this, this document as it grew for eight months, and I could no longer see the group. So I thought, I put it aside. Our American partner called us up and said, the Obama transition team has just called. They want the final papers, and they want them now. So the month of October was really, really exciting, and we managed to, to fill up with, with a third, the third document, which we call, which we call the governance document, uh, which describes, and I'll, I'll get onto that fairly quickly, what is our idea of how to govern the special regime un, un, under that scene. But the, at this phase, now that we're in now, uh, we have two more, two more things to do. We've got to, uh, we've got to work on, do more work on, on the issues of archaeology and the issues of property in the old city. Because the, the conflict comes together in those issues. And, and we need a little more depth before we can draw any conclusions about those. Uh, I said we, 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 we avoided the sovereignty question, but the fact is it really matters to both sides. Really matters to both sides. And the, fa the fact is neither side can back away from uh, it. Is, it is inconceivable that, that the Israel, Israel, Israel is uh, on behalf of all the Jews who walk, turn their back on Jerusalem. Absolutely inconceivable. And if the Palestinians, you know, thought that they could walk away from it, you know, their lives would be miserable forever and ever and a day. So, and the, the other thing we have to work with on that is any outcome that comes up, win-lose, can give you lots of things, including more history, but it won't give you peace. A win-lose outcome in Jerusalem does not lead to peace. It just leads to more conflict later. So, as we went along with these things, we learned a number of things. A special regime cannot be imposed. It is not possible for the UN or the US or NATO to come to Israel or Palestine and impose something on them. And as a result, we have worked very hard to make sure the Israelis and the Palestinians really understand what we're doing. And I'll talk about that a bit later at the other time. What, what we are proposing needs to be owned by the two. And we've had some quite interesting success in actually seeing the way these ideas are beginning to percolate up on both sides. So it must be, and, and the only way it will really work is if it is rooted in the treaty. Because if it's in anything less than a treaty, they can mess with it. 